morning in Yangon, and I arrived at the Hotel Equatorial to a traditional tribal welcome and a chance to catch up on the news of the world. A visit to the spa eased away the rigours of travel. My toughest decision this day was where to begin on the international buffet. Once again, the city beckoned. A Yangon is a beautifully laid out city and one of the nice ways to explore the colonial past is just to walk through the streets. The other nice way is in a Chevy bus which was imported from Britain just prior to the Second World War. Thank you, driver. You're take this. <laughs> Past the colonial facades and familiar landmarks, we looped around the stunning Sule Pagoda, which rises majestically in the heart of the city. Around its octagonal base, palmists and astrologists offer your fortunes and their predictions for a small fee. Our driver slowly negotiated the crowded streets and boulevards. The view from our moving window framing both the old and the new stories of Yangon. And what can the guests see when they drive around Yangon? What can they see? What can they, they can go to the historical sites. They can go to um, they can go to the interesting places in Yangon. Yeah, we'll take them with this bus. And what are some of the interesting places? You think? It's the Shredigon Pagoda, the Scott Market, the Sule Pagoda. Sule Pagoda. Yeah, that's right. From the glittering spire of Sule, it was onto the glow of precious stones, housed under the roof of the Myanmar Gems Jade and Pearl Emporium. We're inside the Myanmar Gems Emporium Hall for the mid-year auction of Gems, Jade and Pearls. It's a seven-day auction and it's by invitation only. The real treasure, though, was to be found outside in a closely guarded compound. Row upon row of giant slabs of jade to be sold by tender and closed competitive bidding. Now, this is commercial rough jade, which comes from Magina in Kashin State in the north of Myanmar and it's sold by auction in these giant slabs to mainly buyers from China and Hong Kong. And lot number 1008, which weighs in at 675 kilos, has a reserve price of 350,000 US dollars. From the green of the jade to the green of downtown, Yangon was once known as the Garden City of the East rich with parks, gardens and lakes that remain today. Now this is Kandoji or Royal Lake in the centre of the garden city of Yangon. And it's here that you can come and explore at your leisure the lake and the surrounding parkland. Just over here to my left is the Royal Barge or Carawake, which was built in 1979 and it has the beautiful mythical bird of Hamsa on the front of it. And right in the background is the piece de resistance, the gold-capped mountain known as Shwedagon. And this is the first shrine built to Lord Buddha over two and a half thousand years ago, a glorious symbol of the nation of Myanmar. The pagoda is visible from all parts of the city and is considered one of the most magnificent monuments on earth. This is Shwedagon Pagoda, a hundred meters high, gilded in gold from top to bottom. And it sits majestically on a hill overlooking the city of Yangon. 
and it shines proudly in the sun as a symbol of hope for the people of Myanmar. Shwedegon is the heart and soul of Myanmar. My anticipation increased with each step up. I joined a steady stream of pilgrims and tourists, making our way past the Buddha scholars and souvenir stalls. Step after step, cool marble beneath my feet and the dazzling gold of a towering pinnacle overhead. The stupa is plated with 8,000 gold slabs and the tip is set with diamonds, rubies, sapphires and topaz. And there's an emerald right in the middle of the stupa which picks up the first and last rays of the sun. 19th century British writer Rudyard Kipling described Swedagon as a beautiful winking wonder. If the 220 tons of gold doesn't dazzle you, then the pagoda's size will. It's set in 114 square acres and measures 326 feet at the tip of its spire. A dazzling array of intricate workmanship and fascinating alcoves, Schwedegon will hold you entranced. There are shrines representing each birthday of the week and private corners where you can rest in the shade and meditate or pray. The pagoda is believed to have been built two and a half thousand years ago. Eight hairs of the Buddha and other relics are said to be enshrined here. Time for some refreshment, and Yangon's tea houses are a favourite place to meet. Now one of the nice things that you can do in Yangon after a stroll through the city is to take tea in a traditional Myanmar tea shop. And this is very much part of the social fabric and the way of life of the people of Yangon. You can sample sweet milk tea, and feast on a selection of freshly baked pastries and local gossip. Dinner included a cultural show, Myanmar style. Then it was back to the Hotel Equatorial for a nightcap in the music club. <laughs> 